Hello, and thanks for dialing into my session uh, here today. My name is Gunnar Müller, and I'd like to present work on the interaction-driven quantum hall plateau transitions between integer and fractional churn insulators in the harper hofstetter model. This is work done in collaboration with my PhD student, Leon Schanderburg and uh, Frank Pormann, uh, and is already published as a preprint, uh, uh, although some new results uh, have been added since, uh, and which I will present today. Um, here's my outline. I'll briefly introduce quantum hole plateau transitions and the harper hofstadter model, uh, and then move on to introduce the scenario for how to present interaction-driven plateau transitions in that model, namely by competition of band filling of magnetic subbands versus the fractional filling of um, the entire lambda level. I'll show you a numerical analysis of that transition and then move on to examine the critical properties. All right, uh, so just a brief reminder about the fractional quantum Hall effect. This is an effect that you see when you place a two-dimensional electron gas into a strong magnetic field perpendicular to the sample. And uh, what you will observe are um, uh, plateaus in the um, Hall conductance associated with um, uh, very uh, low, low conductance, uh, resist low resistance in the longitudinal transport. Uh, and this can be broadly explained by edge modes without backscattering uh, propagating um, at the edges of the sample. Um, and I should also note that each of these plateaus should be regarded as an, a different uh, uh, quantum Hall liquid or quantum liquid. And so each of the um, changes between plateaus is a, a transition between two different states of nature. Uh, and so these uh, quantum Hall plateau transitions have been very well studied. They're usually driven by a change in the magnetic field, however, uh, and have interesting critical properties, which are related to the percolation of paths across the system. And uh, in the case of integer quantum Hall plateaus, uh, this can be explained in uh, terms of a non-interacting continuous transition, uh, where right at the transition a single length scale diverges uh, with some critical exponent um, uh, given by uh, the correlation length exponent here. Uh, and one way to uh, visualize the, the physics of this is that there's some disorder landscape where electrons move along equipotential lines. Uh, and uh, where several such puddles meet, electrons have an opportunity to tunnel across the system uh, and uh, thus connect the edges um, until finally at the transition point, we get exactly one percolating path uh, that takes uh, electrons across the whole system. Now here today, uh, I want to talk about a very different plateau transition, uh, which is based on uh, a clean model uh, where there's no disorder, However, we do need a periodic potential. Um, so the fraction quantum Hall effect in a periodic potential is often described uh, in this tight binding model uh, named after Harper and Hofstadter. Harper who first introduced it in the uh, 50s and Hofstadter who later solved it numerically. Um, so the model is given uh, by the simple tight binding uh, model with a minimal coupling to a gauge field, which re is reflected here by complex phases e to the i phi i alpha beta given by the integral over the vector potential, um, which we can uh, represent in any gauge that we choose, such as lambda gauge here. And the important parameter is the flux density, which is just the magnetic flux uh, per each plaquette of the system. And so then we'll be in the business of uh, adding some interactions to this model and considering this uh, ensuing uh, many body problem um, in what follows. Uh, that is uh, some uh, train of thought that has been suggested by Colin Reed and worked out uh, as a mean field theory, and then further studied by Pfannkuchen, Zerin Senedal, Palmat Yaksh, and also myself and uh, in collaboration with Nigel Cooper. Um, so what made the Hofstadter uh, model famous is the, the fractal single particle spectrum, uh, nicely worked out by Hofstadter in its only paper. Um, and so the self-similar properties uh, are very quickly apparent here. So you see um, overall the spectrum gives the appearance of this kind of butterfly with wings um, and a body in the middle. And um, so you'll find this pattern repeating in um, uh, a number of uh, so-called subcells here, which are all fractally uh, mapped onto the um, mother cell. 
Uh, so in each case, you, uh, at flux density p over q, you will have q bands in total, and p of those will be um, under the main diagonal, i.e. in what's equivalent to the lowest number level. You see the lowest number level corresponds here to the tail, uh, which is then broadened into these uh, various magnetic subbands as we increase the flux density. So let's get to talk about the scenario of the fraction quantum Hall physics in the presence of such magnetic subbands. So the first scenario is that we simply start filling up bands um, from the bottom of the spectrum uh, up to some band gap, and then we get some incompressible state, which is simply described as a non-interacting churn insulator state, uh, which has some churn number. Um, the other candidate is uh, what we get uh, by exploring the uh, quantum Hall physics of the lowest lambda level, which is what we get when we fill all of the subbands in the lowest lambda level. And um, so here we have candidate states given by, uh, for example, the Jane series for the abelian states, uh, and these need to be stabilized uh, by repulsive interactions. So to be concrete, let's choose a flux density of um, n phi equals 3 eleventh, which is somewhere down here in the spectrum. Uh, if you blow this up, you see that there's a um, uh, band gap here uh, with which has a churn number of uh, c equals 4. Uh, under the above um, the lowest magnetic subband, so that gives us our first uh, candidate phase, a churn insulator with c equals 4, which should exist for weak interactions and certainly for zero interactions. And um, we know that, well, we think that the entire lambda level uh, uh, supports, um, for example, the Laughlin state at filling one third. And um, both of these states uh, end up having the same density of particles, uh, so they can co coexist. Um, at the same density and at the same flux. Uh, so we do not tune uh, magnetic fields. Both of these uh, phases can coexist at the same magnetic field, um, but we don't really know uh, how the system will uh, tune from one to the other as a function of interactions. So that's what we want to explore numerically. Uh, the methods we will use is, are based on the IDMRG algorithm uh, and will calculate observables such as um, densities, correlation functions um, from the ground state wave function, and as well as analyzing the entanglement properties, and in particular studying the response to the insertion of a flux adiabatically threaded through the cylinder. All of this is done uh, within the TenPy library, which is available open source at this address. Okay, so uh, just as a warm up, uh, we've looked at the integer chain insulators in the lowest hyper Hofstadter band, uh, which is just a simple numerical check of the Hall conductance that we ex expect to be proportional to the uh, churn number. And indeed, um, this is borne out, um, except for this case of 3 14th, where for some reason our numerics seem to have broken down and we don't get adiabatic transport as we expect. Um, so now let's look at our model at the flux density of 3 11th that we target, um, which is data that you can find in this preprint. Uh, so at finite v, um, up to uh, critical um, uh, interaction strength of around 1.6, um, the, uh, the flux insertion procedure uh, yields uh, exactly the churn number 4 uh, flux insertion that we expect. Uh, so here, because we ultimately then fall into a fractional uh, uh, state with a fractional quantum Hall con conductance, we actually insert uh, three units of flux quantum, uh, which in this regime here exactly corresponds to transporting one unit of charge. Uh, and in between, uh, while there are some points where we can't really fully resolve the um, flux pumping, as we had already seen another um, problem with the integer case uh, previously, um, so, um, well, if you study what the uh, tr charge transported across the system looks like as a function of the inserted flux, you see that there's a, a lot of noise, so we'll fail to be uh, evolving the state adiabatically here. Okay, so let's look at some other observables to see uh, more closely uh, uh, the nature of this transition. So up here I'm presenting the entanglement spectrum. And you see that this evolves uh, fairly smoothly up to the point where we hit the transition and then jumps to um, a different value um, seen in the uh, fractional quantum Hall Laughlin state uh, for large interaction strength. Uh, in particular, we can pull out the entanglement gap, which is the distance from the lowest state to the next lowest state in the same momentum sector. Uh, 
uh, and that shows somewhat of a jump at the transition. Uh, similarly, um, the single particle density matrix, um, uh, so I'm showing here the diagonal spectrum, uh, and again, um, it shows a characteristic jump between the churn insulator phase, where we expect a number of states um, at the, in the, of low-lying levels that corresponds roughly to the number of states uh, in the lowest um, magnetic subband, um, then jumping to a number of states uh, at, at the low um, part of the spectrum corresponding to um, the number of states in the lowest lambda level. And this is borne out. Um, looking at the fidelity susceptibility of the ground state as we tune V, this is uh, again peaked at the same transition point uh, and evolves uh, somewhat smoothly towards that. Um, and this is just replicating the charge pumping that I've already showed you a moment ago. Uh, what's interesting is uh, that the transition appears to have some critical properties. So as we get very close to the transition, uh, both the correlation length and the entanglement entropy uh, grow rapidly uh, as a function of the bond dimension with which we simulate uh, the system. And so these results are highly suggestive of criticality at the transition, uh, which is maybe uh, surprising. So here are some of the critical properties analyzed uh, in terms of the simultaneous scaling of the entropy and correlation length with a bond dimension that's consistent with criticality according to this formula by Cardi and Calabrese, uh, where this should go, the entropy should go as c over 6 times the logarithm of the correlation length. Uh, so the scaling indeed works out very nicely oops, um, uh, for um, different system sizes. And uh, surprisingly, uh, as a function of system size, uh, the central charge that we infer from these um, fits here uh, evolves quite rapidly. For Ly equals 6 um, uh, circumference cylinders, uh, we get um, something that's consistent with central charge 1. Uh, for Ly equals 7, we get something that seems to be consistent with central charge 2, but it's slightly smaller. Um, and for Ly equals 8, we get something that's consistent with uh, C equals 3. Uh, so such a rapid increase um, of the central charge um, with the circumference is very surprising and is only expected if we have uh, some very high entropy state at the transition. And one possible scenario for that would be the emergence of some uh, Fermi surface, which could be a Fermi surface of something like composite fermions, although we don't at current have um, a good theory for that. Um, anyway, so if we assume that a Fermi surface does emerge and has the radius corresponding to the number of particles um, uh, equal to the number of electrons, um, then we can infer uh, from the uh, uh, circumference of the cylinder allowed values of the um, momentum along the y direction. Uh, and so the, there would be several points where um, uh, this kind of gives us lines of states um, with varying kx that we can generate, which correspond to effectively one-dimensional system with right movers and left movers at these two edges of the Fermi surface. Uh, and so here I'm showing um, the central charge that we would deduce from this picture, um, which is uh, consistent with what we see if we assume that um, uh, the effective boundary conditions for those fermions here, which are emergent fermions, can be either odd or even depending on system size. So the odd systems here require um, uh, no twist and the uh, odd ones require uh, a twist of pi. So this is very uh, intriguing and uh, I'd uh, invite you to go check out our preprint, which will shortly be updated uh, for further information. Uh, with that, uh, let me summarize. Uh, the harper hofstadter model supports Lofland states even if the lambda level splits into multiple subbands. And if uh, we choose uh, flex densities with p equals 3, where we have exactly three subbands, we can uh, drive a direct transition from a churn insulator state into this Lofland phase. Uh, this uh, phase is direct at that particular filling, uh, flux density at least, that we have studied. And um, what's intriguing is that this transition shows signs of criticality uh, with an unusual scaling of the central charge with a finite size circumference of the system. With that, thank you very much for uh, viewing my talk. And if you need any more information, there's the preprint with a major update imminently available.